man has to make a certain amount of money, has to pay all the bills, has to pay my bills, has to take me to um, this place or buy me this or provide me this level of experience in order for me to insert thing here. I'll put it like this, Western prostitutes don't always know that they're prostitutes. Just, just saying it. Like cultures where the economy might be bad, um, but you find that the people are beautiful. I think that's because, well, let's focus on this vanity that we can control. So you have men and women selecting for beauty and beauty begets beauty, at least physically. So yeah, these, these women are gorgeous, but the, the average gorgeous woman, at least from my observation in Cartagena was a prostitute. And, and you see these uh, themes come up in shows even like Pop the Balloon, but they might code it with. Wait, wait the fuck? I know damn well y'all ain't do party been on me just like that. All right, honey. It was like a rotation. Uh, which is essentially prostitution. It is an exchange of goods for the goods. But I think in other places, um, they're a bit more blunt. They're a bit more overt about it. But the other thing I noticed too is like, even though a lot of them were prostitutes, and like I said, they were they were the kind of gorgeous where you're like, I understand Drake. You know when people joke about Drake trying to save strippers in the club? Like this, that's the level of gorgeous these women were. You know, with living hard lifestyles, with being a part of this particular trade, at least as a man, if you know what to look for, you can look at their eyes and you can see that, yo, she ain't there. She, she's not there. But again, like I've talked about, I think a lot of us as men, we primarily look at women through the lens of cons consumption, right? So we don't consider if she's actually there. <laughs> Jimmy, you're thinking with your dick. I am not thinking with my dick. Yes, you are. No, I just think that Put she's, your a, dick away. she's an emotional, Jim, interesting, caring girl. Jimmy, that's your dick talking. And I mean that like literally or figuratively, right? Like if, if she's literally there, if, if she's, you know, mentally there, or if she's there for us. Me personally, maybe it's a pride thing, maybe it's an ego thing, but like I, I can't see myself at any point um, indulging in soliciting that service because I take pride in knowing that the woman wants me. Right? But I also understand brothers who do. It's it's simpler. It's a more overt exchange versus this more covert Western exchange where it's the same exact thing, but there's this sense of entitlement of you're supposed to do all this and you're not necessarily supposed to get anything in return. Like, You should give me more money. What is this? Why? No, I'm just giving. It's just free money. I want more though. What am I doing with this? Why do you want more? It's free. How can you want free? I gave you... Free? I want more free money. Like a little bit more. You want more? Yeah, I want more. Why? Because I need more. Ah, okay. Because, because you know, maybe I want to give it to the next person. Uh, I need to <laughs> take my... I need to... Come, let's go. Let's, it's fine. Sorry to bother you. <laughs> so... You know, one of one of the things that was interesting is like me and my boys were at a restaurant and it was like a restaurant that was indoor outdoor and the there was a, a barrier between the indoor and the outdoor that was like see through. So we were sitting inside and this girl walked up outside. Gorgeous. Titties out, you know, she looked like she just left the beach. And um, she took a table where we could see her and you know sat down and you know just ordered her little drink or whatever and i looked at my boy i was like is she one he was like <laughs> and it's funny because she was looking at us and in, in a different context uh you would have thought oh man she's feeling me let me go talk to her like they're professional right they'll give you that girlfriend experience that you're looking for about two minutes later we saw this dude walk up, probably black man, probably 50s, 60s. He walked up like on the street close to the restaurant and he called her over. And next thing you see, they exchanged numbers, set up a uh, set up an appointment for later. I was like, oh man, yo, yo. And another time we were at a rooftop bar and we we're in the walled city. If anybody who's been to Colombia, 
We're in the walled city and we were kind of overlooking the roundabout way place. You come in through the wall and then you take a lap. And we would see groups of gorgeous women come in, take laps, like multiple laps. Sometimes they would come around, come around and they'd leave. Sometimes they'd come around, you'd see them leave with the guy. Sometimes they'll come around, leave with the guy, come back, leave with another guy. Like it was insane. And and like I said, they were the kind of pretty that you would look at her and you wouldn't assume at all that she got down like that. You wouldn't assume that she was, for my Nigerians, she was an Ashau. <laughs> you wouldn't assume that at all. It was a very eye-opening experience. And then it got me thinking about, okay, um, how is this different than the United States? And how is this the same as the United States, particularly in our current, you know, can you pay my bills culture? Like I said earlier, it's different because the self-awareness isn't there. The necessity to participate in this lifestyle isn't necessarily there. But again, you can explain it away by, I don't want a man who doesn't provide for me, or I don't want a man who can't do these financial stunts to earn my attention. When you kind of look at some people's track records, it's essentially the same. Is that why you called me up? So I can get you pregnant? Sorry to bust your bubble, sweetie, but a bitch gotta get paid. And this, over here, Kevin, right here, is my lottery ticket. You know, this guy did whatever you needed him to do at that moment in time to buy you your affection, your attention, your vagina. And then at some point he got tired of it or, you know, he could no longer afford it. And then you moved on to the next guy. Right. And and so so I say that to say, you know, I'm still consistent in the stance that women shouldn't necessarily be dismissive about the fact that prostitution is so rampant in these third world countries. I think it's also an opportunity to reflect and ask yourselves, is it that bad? Is it that bad that men, successful men, at least men successful enough to afford to travel at, le at their leisure, sometimes live in these places for extended periods of time? Is it strange that they choose to do that as opposed to the realities of the mating and dating game in the United States. Hey, if you've made it all the way to the end, please click that like and subscribe button. Also share this with somebody that you think would gain value from it. Click the thumbnail at the top if you want the full video. Click the thumbnail at the bottom if you want a video that's closely related to this. Again, like, share, subscribe. Appreciate you guys for watching. Check out some more of our content. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.